Hey guys, my name is Jamin. Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel where I try to bring you a wide variety of computer DIY upgrade and repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start troubleshooting a Samsung laptop computer that's not turning on, it's dead, uh, it's got no signs of life or very little signs of life, maybe just some lights and LEDs here and there. Before we get going guys, please remember to like the video if this does help you out, share it if you feel like someone else can benefit. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description first. It could save you some time getting an answer, but if you do need to leave me a question or comment, please feel free to. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. For those of you who would like to support the channel a little more, you can leave a tip and there's a couple different ways of doing that. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app. Find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note. Okay, so now that's out of the way, let's get into the project. The laptop computer I'm gonna be using in this demonstration tutorial is gonna be a Lenovo, but all the parts are the same parts you'll find in your brand computer. Okay, so here's the computer not turning on. The first thing I'm gonna have you do, guys, is just press and hold your power button down for up to one minute. Sometimes it's simply a communication issue. Uh, so before you try anything more severe, just press and hold that power button down for one whole minute. If you guys would like any suggestions on any tools or supplies that I use in my shop, you can check out this link above. It'll be a link to my Amazon store. On my Amazon store, there are several sections here. Repair tools is one of them. Uh, here you can find the common hand tools that I use, along with things like anti-static mats and bracelets that help prevent you from damaging your computer. If that doesn't solve your issue, now I'm going to have you move on to step two. We're going to unplug your charger, flip your computer over, and if you can, remove your battery. If you can remove your battery, that's the better thing to do here. It, it's a better way to perform this test. If you can't remove your battery, you can try doing this test without removing your battery. Um, for a lot of you, it still may work. If you do want to do this test the right way and your battery is internal and you can't get at it that easy, uh, there'll be a description or there'll be, I'm sorry, there'll be a video in the description below um, on how to access an internal battery. Or if you want step-by-step -step instructions for your computer, leave me a comment with your brand and model and I can try to help you get into your specific computer. But after you've removed the battery, after you've unplugged your charger, you're gonna flip your computer back over and you're gonna press and hold that power button again for one minute. So press and hold that for one minute. A lot of times what happens is power will build up in various components in your computer that shouldn't build up there. And that can interfere with the way it works, even it turning on. So hopefully by doing this, we're draining the power from those components that should not have a power buildup. After you're done holding that down, you can put your battery back in, plug your charger back in, and you can try turning on your computer. Again, if that works for you, leave me a comment, let me know. If not, we're gonna keep pressing on ahead. If that doesn't get your computer turned on, we're gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna remove the charger again, remove the battery again. We're gonna press and hold for another minute. And now we're just gonna put one item back. We're gonna plug in your charger, but we're gonna leave your battery out. Try starting your computer. If your computer starts up, then great. What you've done is you've identified a bad battery as the thing that's making your computer not turn on. I would, at that point, replace it. If you want any help finding the right battery for your computer, let me know. Again, leave me your brand and your model number. I can help you out. Uh, if that doesn't help your computer turn on, then we're gonna unplug your charger, press and hold the power button for another minute, and now we're gonna put your battery back in, and we're gonna leave the charger out. So we're gonna kinda swap them and try the other one now. Try turning your computer on. Same thing as before, if your computer turns on, you've identified your power adapter as most likely faulty. Um, I would at this point replace your power adapter uh, your battery is probably good. One thing also to note guys, if these things are not helping your computer, try doing them a couple times. Uh, try holding on the power button 
for one minute, try that repeatedly, try taking your battery and charge up, try this process a couple times. Um, some of you may need that to fully drain the power. One thing I did want to shout out guys about this power drain procedure. If it happens every once in a while to a computer, that's fine. It's kind of an unfortunate normal thing with some electronics. However, if you find you have to do this every time you need to start your computer, there's a problem. Uh, the first thing I would suggest, make sure you're using your computer plugged into a surge protector and a healthy one, not a super old one that's not working. Uh, don't plug your computer directly into the wall all the time. The surge protector will protect it from any bad power coming through. Also, make sure your computer is not always plugged in and charging. A battery to stay healthy needs to regularly discharge and charge. If your computer's always plugged in and your battery's never getting that workout, the battery's gonna go bad and may start affecting your computer like this. If you have checked both those off your list and your computer still needs this every time you start your computer, there'll be a video link below in the description showing you how to test your charger to make sure it's good. At that point, you may wanna consider replacing your charger or your battery. Next test I have you run in this video is gonna involve your RAM. And just like your battery, some of you may be able to easily access your RAM through one of those quick panels. If not, again, leave me your brand and your model and I can help you get inside your specific computer to access your RAM if it's not easy. So before getting into my computer, the first thing I'm gonna do is remove my battery. Make sure your, uh, your cable's unplugged. We want as little power running through this computer as possible when you open it. Um, if your battery is internal, you want to take that out first thing when you get into your computer. I'm just going to go around now and remove the screws to my panel. So here are two RAM ports right there. So most of you will see something like this. You'll have two RAM ports. Some may only have one. Um, basically what we're going to do here guys is test for either a bad stick of RAM, a loose stick of RAM, or even a bad port. So the first thing you want to do is take both of your RAM sticks out. Give the RAM ports a good blow, blow on them. Um, make sure it's clean and put your RAM sticks back in. Try starting your computer. The way that RAM sticks usually set in, there are two metal arms on either side. They're held together by springs. So when you push those metal arms away, the RAM will release like that. And then you just slide the RAM out. It's got a long port, short port. Um, that's how it goes in there. You can't put it in uh, backwards. It has to go in the right way. So that's how you take your RAM out. Again, take both your RAM out, put them back in, try starting your computer. If your computer starts, it could have just been loose. It, it happens. Um, if your computer doesn't start, we're, we're going to test for each RAM stick now. So take one of your RAM sticks, put it into one of the ports, snap it in correctly, make sure that it's secure, try turning on your computer. If your computer works, you've identified the other RAM stick is bad. If your computer doesn't work, we're going to switch ports. We're going to take it out, put it in this port, try starting your computer. If your computer does not start, then we'll take this RAM stick out and then put your second RAM stick. Again, I, I only had one, but you'd want your second RAM stick. Try that in both ports, see if it works. Try turning it on in, in both ports. If you only have one stick like I do, um, you can try just reseeding it. You can try unplugging it, plugging it back, trying the computer, and then moving it from one port to the next. That, that can test for that. But you need another good stick to test it if, if this is good. If this RAM's bad, you won't know. Um, you need a, another stick of RAM. There'll be a video link below in the description on how to purchase the correct compatible RAM for your computer if you don't know how. So for those of you who find out it's your RAM, no big deal. RAM's not one of the most expensive parts of a computer. However, it is a big factor in the speed of your computer. So if you do have to replace your RAM, may as well upgrade. There'll be a video link below in the description showing you how you can find compatible RAM. You can also leave me a message if you have any questions. The third and last test I'll show in this video is how to perform a manual BIOS reset on your computer by temporarily removing your CMOS battery from your motherboard. I'll show you that now. So this is your CMOS battery. It's a little round component here. It looks like a watch battery inside. It's wrapped in black electrical tape and it plugs into a port. Another common CMOS battery presentation is on this motherboard here. That's another common way you can see a CMOS battery on a motherboard. All you would do is, is unplug it from the port. Don't pull on the wire. Just 
just put your fingernails on either side of that thing and slide it out. A little at a time, wiggle it out, and then you've unplugged it. So that's a BIOS reset. Leave that unplugged for a while, and then just plug it back in. If you have this other kind of CMOS battery here, uh, the way to get this out, there's a spring here that holds it in, and a spring underneath here that pushes it up. So we're gonna wanna push this battery back and up. Be very careful though, because this right here is very breakable. If that plastic part snaps off, then your battery won't be secure. So just be very careful, push in and up, like that. And it comes out like that. And then again, you would leave it out for a time, and then you would slide it back in and snap it back down into place. So those are the three tests I'm gonna show you how to run on a dead computer in this video. There's some of the easiest and some of the most common reasons why a computer is not starting that I find in my shop. Keep in mind, you may have to try these steps multiple times in order to see results in some of your cases, especially I'm talking about the power drain procedure. You may have to try it two, maybe three times to see a result in some computers. However, if you're still not seeing any new signs of life after these steps, you're probably looking at a little heavier problem with your computer than what we've gone over. You're probably looking at a weird BIOS issue, a motherboard issue, a motherboard component issue, maybe like a power jack or something being bad. Um, I'll go more in depth into other causes, other troubleshooting steps in my next video dealing with this problem. Thanks so much for watching the video guys. As mentioned before, please remember to like and share if it helps you out. If you think it can help someone else out, feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer content like this. And if you want to support the channel a little further by leaving a tip, it's very appreciated. Thank you so much for watching again. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.